Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Christian and I'm a mix engineer. Today I've got Big Fish by Connor Price and Pertinence, but I'm actually gonna talk about routing today, so let's dive in. So I think this is a really important topic to talk about because a lot of it just involves mix engineer efficiency, not only on the front end with organization, but also on the back end with how you bounce things and stuff like that. So let me just show you here. This is my template right here. So I have a drum bus and then I have all the vocal stuff that I find really matters to me. And you can see here, it's all of like, it's just standard delay stuff, it's standard verb stuff, some of the vocal smash and overdrive parts of my template that I have talked about before. And then you can see here, I have my music bus, my vocal bus and my master here. I have this plug on it. I don't really use this plugin anymore, but I have it on here just from an old preset. And then you'll notice here I have all these instrument buses over here on the side. Um, I'll dive into those in just a little bit, but they're all hidden and they're all right there. So now bookmark that because I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. This is just my basic session template start. So now let me dive into Big Fish here. So let's say I've imported all these tracks for starters here. I have these track presets that I use a lot and here are all of them. Some of these I don't really use anymore. I should actually clean these up. But like for these, let's say I'll mess the session up because I saved it as something different here. So look, I'll hit drums. Say these were new tracks. I hit drums. So they start off at silent. They're all routed to this drum bus here, which obviously was previously empty before. But everything's routed and it also gets started as a group right here. So it's it's right here, my A group, it's drums. It's super efficient. This is how I start. And then same thing. I'll find the 808. I'll do this. I'll click it. Track preset. User. Bass or synth bass, I mean, whatever you want, but I could have labeled the 808, but this just, usually there's only like one or two kind of bass tracks, so I just, it's just bass overall. But same thing, it's color-coded, starts off absolutely silent, gets routed to the appropriate bus here. I go all the way down, even all the way through lead vox. So like, this one's kind of convoluted, I'm not really gonna dive into this, but I'll highlight all the, the things that I want to be in the lead vocal bus, and then there's like a background vocal, BGV1, BGV2, BGV3. Um, usually I'm, I'm putting all the vocals into kind of one bus here, so like all of Connor's stuff would have been lead vox, all of pertinent stuff would be BGV1. But there's other times if I want more separation, and it's like if it's like, let's just say a Connor song or a main artist song, I'll do all of the lead vocal stuff, like lead vocals, doubles in lead vox, and then just to give it some separation, I'll do like maybe the low octave stuff or the high octave stuff or harmonies, whatever, like BGV1, all the ad libs and things that are like obviously different in BGV2. It's just an organizational thing, but it's it just allows me to have some split. So as you can see here, like, yeah, pertinence is right here at BGV1. And so it's it's super efficient. And honestly, session setup is it takes me just 20 minutes max. And that a lot of that 20 minutes is like it's like editing vocals or editing drums or whatever needs to be edited. Usually vocals, that's probably the, the most session setup that I have to do. But as far as like track presets go, like setting the actual session up to where everything's routed appropriately, that's like minutes, literally minutes. And it's because I've put the work into the track presets and stuff like that. And so the reason why I wanted to bookmark where everything is routed, so you'll see here, I have like these all caps drums right here, all caps bass, perk one, keys one, like the lead vox bus gets into all caps lead vox here. The reason why that is, is because it gets all routed into these hidden buses here. And now, so let's say I need to make multi-tracks of all of these. This is something I learned kind of real quick in the church world, which is my background of creating uh, multi-tracks for like live playback. I needed to do this quick without it taking absolutely hours of like bouncing every group and all this stuff. And so the really easy way to do this, and I've done this in my session, is now that everything's routed appropriately, I have drums, perk, bass, you know, whatever I end up needing, like this one, I don't need, so I'll just hide it. You know, I don't need acoustic for this song, whatever, whatever. I don't know. You just go through all of them and just like get the ones that you need out here. I'll highlight whichever ones bounce and then you can bounce it however you want to, but it will literally bounce the group or like what's getting sent into that bus as stems. And it's so perfect. Um, I think someone, uh, I think a buddy of mine told me about this years ago and it saved me hours. Now here's the, I think overarching issue is that it doesn't get processed obviously through all like your mix bus stuff, but I don't really think that every like multi-track needs, especially for live playback needs to be mastered. If you want some more gain, sure you can like bounce each one and that's fine. Even still, like if you did this one at a time, it still makes things so much easier to organize and bounce. It's still efficient, but this is just my easy way. Cause I already mix loud anyway. So like this flow right here has saved me hours. All right. And then, so then as you can see too, here's an even more organizational thing. All of these hidden buses, go from like, you know, bass, whatever, get sent into the instrumental bus, which is this. And then all the vocals here get sent into the acapella bus. So these are like, it's getting more narrow and narrow. And then instrumental acapella gets sent into the master. So 
it's crazy kind of routing and a little confusing at face value, but the more you dive into it, the more it makes sense. Uh, but here, and so same thing here, if I wanted an unmastered instrumental or acapella bounce too, this is how I often do it. So I can literally get all of my multi-tracks, instrumental and acapella in a clean swoop right here. Look, and it's just, you hit bounce offline, it's incredible. Again, I, I can't reiterate this enough because I've had pushback on this. Like, yes, whatever processing is on each bus is what you're going to get. And so if you wanted a, uh, a mixed bus or a mastered version of the instrumental, like just, just bounce it. You should spend extra time to bounce it. it <laughs> like, I, I understand the, the pushback here, but this is just a really easy way for me to um, get the instrumental and the acapella to an artist. Because oftentimes, you know, like sure, it could be mastered and get uploaded or to whatever kind of distribution. Oftentimes labels need that. But more often than not, they just want this instrumental for like a TikTok. And it's because it's already loud, because it's pretty limited here, it's not like slammed. But they, if they're like talking over an instrumental on their TikTok or just need the acapella for a certain feature on a TikTok, like that's just the reality we live in is that they just need this for content. Again, if it's like, getting, if it's getting uploaded, do it appropriately. But this is just an efficient way to provide assets to clients that are asking for this stuff. Having a setup like this is super important because it makes you, it's not only organizationally a, a really great way to have something, and you could do this in your own way, but it's also just a great thing to have for, as a mix engineer, if someone's asking for this stuff, hey, can you get this? Quick, boom, done. And it's kind of mind blowing to some artists how quick you can get these assets, and that and that's a huge win for a mix engineer. Like how quick you can provide these things. This is a really easy way to set up your session. There's obviously a lot of front work that you have to do to like make this all kind of routed appropriately. Like it, you know, it could take you a couple hours to make this a thing. But once you have it set up, I mean, it has been life changing for me to have this all set up. And so when they're asking for like, hey, can you quickly bounce this? Yeah, real quick. Watch, boom, 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 boom. It's like seconds long, you know, and that, that as a mix engineer is just really helpful. So I wanted to dive into this today because I feel like this is a really important topic for engineers. This isn't for everybody. This is a super niche conversation about how I set up my template. And honestly, I'm sorry for the Connor fans who wanted to watch how I mixed Big Fish. This is not it. I hope I prefaced that well enough at the beginning, but this is just an insight on how I have everything routed. And again, like, let me, let me be clear here. I don't have these all showing at all times. Oh, wait. They're usually hidden, but they're there. And uh, honestly, you'll notice it. Like if you really wanted to deep dive into some of my other videos where I'm like zooming in on my file here, you can see all these at the bottom of my list. They're in every single session. The ones that I just have showing, it usually start it like ends here and then starts here because that's all I need. I really only go to these buses if I need to bounce something, but they're hidden. They're all correctly routed, obviously because everything is being routed into a certain bus and then the music bus and vocal bus. There's no delays on anything. Um, and if it were to be delayed, which it's already not, but if it were to be delayed, they're all being routed through a bus before music and acapella. So there is no delay. It's all like evenly bust out. So anyways, that's a really long winded conversation of something that's super nerdy. And hopefully that's helpful for like just a few of you who are watching, but that's my session. And if you have any questions, I mean, as always comment below, DM me. Um, I would love to answer any questions that you guys have, but with that said, I'll see you guys next time.